In this tutorial I will be using pins PA9 and 10 for my UART driver as they can be configured as UART1 pins and are both located on GPIO port A. The clocks for the GPIO port and the UART peripheral need to be enabled before they can be used. The block diagram found in the datasheet of the board tells me that the GPIO port A is located on the AHB2 bus and the UART1 is located on the APB2 bus. This means that AHB2 and APB2 peripheral clock enable registers contain bits to enable the clocks for the peripherals. Bit 0 of AHB2 peripheral clock enable register will enable the clock for GPIO port A and bit 14 of APB2 peripheral clock enable register will enable the clock for UART1. I will create a init UART function that will hold all function calls and code related to configuration of UART1. I will also create a function called init clocks. Inside this function I will access AHB2 peripheral clock enable register and enable the clock for GPIO port A by setting bit 0 of this register. I will also access APB2 peripheral clock enable register and set bit 14 to enable the UART1 clock. I'll then go ahead and call this function within the init UART function. Now that I have enabled the clocks I can configure the pins. I need to first set the mode of pins P8, 9 and 10 to alternate function to allow me to set them as UART1 pins. Bits 18 to 21 in the GPIO port mode register set the mode of my pins. Writing a value of 2 in the respective positions will set the pins to alternate function. To set the alternate function of the pins I need to refer to GPIO alternate function registers. Since I am configuring pins 9 and 10, I only need to access the GPIO alternate function high register as it contains bits to configure the alternate function of pins 8 to 15. Bits 4 to 11 configure the alternate function of pins 9 and 10. To know which alternate function each of the bit combination represents, I need to refer to the datasheet of my microcontroller. Here the following table specifies that alternate function 7 represents the UART1 with pin PA9 being the transmitter pin and pin PA10 being the receiver pin. Therefore writing a value of 7 in the respective positions of the alternate function register will set the new function of the pins to UART1. In the project I create a function to set pin mode to alternate function. In this function I write to the mode register of GPIO port A to first reset the pin modes for pins PA9 and 10 to set them to a known state and then write to the same register again but this time setting bit 19 and 21 to set the pins to alternate function. To set the alternate function to UART1 I will create another function and I repeat the process by first clearing bits 4 to 11 in alternate function high register of GPIO port A to set the bits that configure pin 9 and 10 to a known state. I will then write to the register again, this time setting bits 4 to 6 for pin 9 and bits 8 to 10 for pin 10 in order to set the alternate function of those pins to UART1. To give the code some structure and keep it tidy, I will create another function that will call the two functions that configure the pins and will call this function from within the init UART function. With the pins configured, let's move on to configuring the UART itself. I will set the UART up to have one start bit and stop bit, 8 data bits, no parity bit and a baud rate of 115,200. The UART contains bits in its registers for features and modes it can be set to such as LIN and others. I will not be using interrupts, DMA or setting the UART into different modes of operation. Therefore to keep things nice and concise I will only detail bits that are relevant to getting my version of UART going. Any interrupts, DMA or feature enabling bits will be set to zero to keep them disabled. There will be some bits I will be skipping altogether as they are related to the disabled features and therefore their state is irrelevant to the operation of my version of the UART driver. So first taking a look at control register 1, the combination of bits 28 and 12 determine the number of bits that will be transmitted and received by the UART peripheral. I want the word length to be 1 start bit and 8 data bits, so I will set the two bits to 0. Bits 27 and 26 I interrupt related. Bit 15 determines the oversampling mode. As UART is an asynchronous protocol, oversampling is done on the receive pin and its purpose is to allow the receiver to synchronize itself to the incoming data packet in order to sample the data bits correctly. The start bit exists and precedes the data bits to allow the synchronization process to happen before the actual data is sampled. The ideal place for the receiver to sample the data would be in the middle of the transmitted data bit to ensure that the state of the bit is recorded accurately. 
Now how the receiver attempts to achieve this is by sampling the receive pin at a faster rate than the baud rate in order to detect the start of the start bit, which is the transition from the idle state to the active state. By convention this is a transition from a high state to a low state. When the start bit is detected and the receiver oversamples at let's say 16 times the baud rate, it will consider the midpoint of the start bit to be 8 clock cycles later. From that point the subsequent bits will be sampled every 16 clock cycles. Now, in reality there are factors which will cause the sampling of the receiver to deviate from that desired center point. One of the factors is the sampling frequency itself. Since oversampling is the only synchronization mechanism, the UART may detect the start bit one clock cycle after the transition has occurred. This means that the potential deviation of the sampling from the center is smaller than the period of the UART's internal clock. The relationship between the frequency of the sampling clock and the deviation is inversely proportional. The higher the frequency of the sampling clock, the smaller the potential deviation from the desired sampling point which is the center of the data bit. I have two options, oversampling by 8 or 16. So what is being sacrificed for the lower deviation from the desired sampling point gained from oversampling at a higher rate? The thing that is sacrificed is the baud rate that can be achieved, which is given by the following equation. Since the input frequency to the UART is the limiting factor, it is easier to think of the frequency required to achieve a specific baud rate with a specific rate of oversampling. For example, say you supply the UART with a frequency of 1 MHz and you want to get a baud rate of 115,200 with oversampling by 16. The required frequency in this case will be at least 1.8432 MHz, which is almost twice the supplied frequency. However, this baud rate could be achieved with oversampling by 8, as the minimum required frequency would be 0.9216 MHz, which is less than what is supplied. What oversampling value is chosen will depend on the clock frequency supplied to the UART peripheral. In my case, the default system clock runs at 4 MHz, so I'll keep bit 15 set to 0 to oversample by 16 to keep the potential deviation as low as possible. Bit 14 is interrupt related. Bit 13 enables mute mode when set to 1, so I'll set this bit to 0 to keep it disabled. Bit 10 determines whether the parity will be inserted. I don't want a parity bit, so I'll set this bit to 0. Bit 9 determines whether the parity is even or odd. I don't care about the state of this bit since I'll be keeping parity control disabled. Bits 8 to 4 are interrupt related. Bit 3 enables the UART transmitter when set and disables it when cleared. I will be setting this bit to 1 when I finish configuring the UART. Bit 2 enables the UART receiver when set and disables it when cleared. Like with bit 3, I will be setting this bit to 1 when I configure the peripheral. Bit 0 enables the UART. Without this bit set, the UART will not be able to communicate. This bit should always be set after the configuration process is completed. Ok, having covered all the required bits in this register, let's go and configure the register in the project. I will first create a function and write all the UART specific configuration code in there. Now I will access control register 1 of UART1 and clear. Bit 28 for a word length of 1 start bit and 8 data bits. Bits 27 and 26 to inhibit 2 interrupts enabled using these 2 bits. Bit 15 for oversampling by 16. Bit 14 to inhibit the interrupt that this bit enables. Bit 13 to keep mute mode disabled. Bit 12 for a word length of 1 start bit and 8 data bits. Bit 10 as I won't be implementing parity control. Bits 8 to 4 to inhibit interrupts that these bits enable. Bits 3 and 2 to keep the transmitter and receiver disabled as I am not done configuring the UART just yet. And finally bit 0 to keep the UART disabled until I finish configuring the UART. Moving on to control register 2, bit 23 enables receiver timeout which is used when reading from the smart card in block mode. I won't be doing that so I will set this bit to 0 to keep the receiver timeout disabled. Bit 20 enables automatic baud rate detection. I will be setting baud rate manually so I will set this bit to 0. Bit 19 determines whether the data is sent least or most significant bit first. Because UART devices usually send bits LSB first, I will set this bit to 0 to make the UART transmit and receive data LSB first to stick to the convention. Bit 18 is used in smart card mode and is therefore irrelevant. Bits 17 and 16 determine whether the transmitter and receiver pins will idle in the high or low state. By convention, the pins are set high when idle, so I'll set the two bits low to stick with the convention. 
Bit 15 can be used to swap the functions of the transmit and receive pins so that the transmit pin will be set to receive and the receive pin will be set to transmit. I won't be swapping the functions so I'll keep this bit set to zero. Bit 14 sets the UART into LIN mode which stands for Local Interconnect Network and is another serial comms protocol so I'll set this bit to zero to keep this mode disabled. Bits 13 and 12 determine the number of stop bits. I want one stop bit so I'll be setting both bits to zero. Bit 11 can be used to make UART into a synchronous protocol by enabling a clock pin to be used when transmitting and receiving data. I will set this bit to zero as I don't want to synchronize the protocol. The last bit I care about in this register is bit 6 which enables the LIN break detection interrupt. I will have LIN mode disabled but the pins are still being used and the manual doesn't state that the interrupt request won't be generated when LIN mode is disabled. I don't want signals to be generated needlessly and for this reason I will set this bit to 0. So I access control register 2 and clear. Bit 23 to disable the receiver timeout feature. Bit 20 to disable automatic baud rate detection. Bit 19 to transmit and receive data LSB first. Bit 17 and 16 to keep the state of the pins high when idle. Bit 15 to keep the function of the pins as defined in the pinout. Bit 14 to not enable LIN mode. Bit 13 and 12 as I want one stop bit. Bit 11 as I don't want a synchronous UART. And finally bit 6 to keep the LIN break detection interrupt disabled. In control register 3, bit 24 is interrupt related. Bit 14 enables the RS485 driver. I want it disabled, so I'll set this bit to 0. Bit 12 disables the overrun functionality when set. The task of the overrun functionality is to signal when an overrun error occurs. In a UART, this type of error occurs when a packet of data is shifted into the shift register of the UART, but it cannot be transferred to the receive data register because a packet of data received previously was not read from it. When this bit is set to zero, the overrun functionality is enabled and the following happens when this error occurs. The overrun error flag will be set in the UART's interrupt and status register. The data that is waiting in the receive data register will not be overwritten by the incoming data and will remain available in the register. The shift register will be overwritten which means that the packet that triggered the overrun by being shifted into the shift register is lost. Any subsequent bits that are transmitted to the UART are also lost. To be able to receive data again, the overrun error flag must be cleared which can be done by writing into bit 3 of the interrupt flag clear register. When this bit is set, this functionality is disabled which means that the new data packets shifted into the shift register will be transferred directly into the receive data register and override any unread data without raising the overrun error flag. If you can guarantee that the data will be read before the next packet arrives or you will be in control of the communication, then this bit can be set to 1. I will use the polling method to check whether the receive register is not empty in this tutorial so I won't need to have this functionality enabled and will therefore set this bit to 1. Bit 11 determines how many samples will be taken when sampling the incoming data bits on the receiver pin. When set to 0, 3 samples are taken per bit. The purpose of taking more than one sample of each incoming bit is to determine whether the incoming data is affected by noise. If it is, a noise detection flag is set in the interrupt and status register but the data is still transferred to the receive data register. When this bit is set, the noise detection flag is disabled and one sample is taken per bit for the sole purpose of determining the state of the data bit. The recommendation is to use the free sample bit method when working in a noisy environment to reject the data when noise is detected which indicates that the data was potentially corrupted by noise. When the environment is not noisy, the one sample bit method can be used. As I won't be using the microcontroller in a noisy environment, I will set this bit to 1 to use the one sample bit method. Bit 1 enables the infrared data association mode which is utilized when communicating with infrared devices. I won't be using this mode. The last bit, bit 0, enables the error interrupt. I will set this bit to 0 to keep it inhibited. In the project, I will access control, register 3 and clear, bit 24 to disable the transmission complete before guard time interrupt, bit 14 to disable driver enable mode, bit 9 to 3 to disable various modes and features I won't be using, bit 1 as I won't be using IRDA mode, and bit 0 to disable the generation of the error interrupt. I will then access the register again, but this time only set bit 12 to disable the overrun functionality and bit 11 to set the sampling mode to one sample per bit. 
The last register I need to look at when configuring the UART driver is the baud rate register, which sets the baud rate of the UART. The value that needs to be written into this register to achieve the desired baud rate is calculated by dividing the value of the UART's input clock by the desired baud rate when oversampling by 16. When oversampling by 8, the frequency in this equation is multiplied by 2. Additionally, when oversampling by 8, bits 3 to 0 in the calculated number needs to be shifted right by 1 to get the final value. As an example, I'll calculate the required value to achieve the baud rate of 115,200. I divided the input frequency, which in my case is 4 MHz, by the desired baud rate, which gives me a value of 35. In the case of oversampling by 8, I multiply the 4 MHz by 2 and divide by 115,200. I then take bits 3 to 0 of the calculated number and shift them to the right by 1, which results in a value of 66. Since I'm oversampling by 16, I will use the value of 35 to set my baud rate. So, I will access the baud rate register and write the value of 35 into it to set the baud rate to 115,200. With this, the configuration of the UART is complete. The last thing to do is to enable the peripheral. I will access control register 1 and set bit 3 to enable the transmitter, bit 2 to enable the receiver, and bit 0 to enable the UART. I will call this function from within my init UART function, and I will take the init UART function and call it from main to set everything up when the microcontroller starts running. I will now write some functions to allow me to communicate using the peripheral. I'll start with the function to receive data. For that, I'll create a function called receiveUART, which will return a byte of data. The character reception section of the reference manual states that the RXNE flag is set when data transmitted to the microcontroller has been transferred from the shift register to the receive data register and is ready to be read. Bit 5 in the interrupt and status register represents this flag, and so I have to check that this flag is set before reading from the receive data register. So, in the created function, I will first declare a variable that will store data that will be read from the receive data register. Next, I create an if statement and check if the RXNE flag is set by reading the interrupt and status register and ending the content of the register with the RXNE flag bit, which is just a value of 1 shifted left by 5. Inside the if statement, I will read the receive data register and save data read from the register into the local variable I created. This way the program will only read the receive data register and save its contents into the variable if the RXNE flag was set. And finally, I will return data stored in the variable. Now moving on to the transmit function, I will create one called transmit UART which will take a byte as a parameter. The reference manual tells me that the data to be transmitted needs to be written into the transmit data register. This action will clear the TXC flag which is located in the interrupt and status register, indicating that the register has been filled with data to be transmitted, but the data has not yet been moved from this register into the shift register for transmission. Once the data is moved into the shift register and transmission has started, the TXC flag is set again, indicating that another data frame can be written into the register to be transmitted. At that point I can write another data frame into the transmit data register without overwriting the previous data that was written into it. I do this by reading the content of the interrupt and status register and performing an AND operation on the content and the TXC flag bit which expands to a 1 shifted left by 7. I then invert the result as I want to remain in the loop until the TXC flag is set. I then write the byte of data passed to the function into the transmit data register. With the transmit and receive functions complete, the last thing to do before I test the UART out is calling the transmit and receive functions in main. Inside the loop I will create an if statement inside which I will call the receive function. If I receive something over the UART I will call the transmit function to transmit a value of 85 which in ASCII will be a capital letter U. Since I'm using my computer as input, I am using a USB to TTL converter to enable communication between my computer and the microcontroller. Here is a diagram of how to connect the microcontroller pins to the device. With that being said, I'll upload the code onto the microcontroller and fire up a serial terminal configured to match the configuration of the microcontroller's UART. If I now send a character, I should be getting a response from the microcontroller in the form of a letter U. The letter appears on the screen, which means everything is working correctly. So this is it for this one. As always, if you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and giving this video a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.